Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3, back with another kicking graphic novel review. Today we're looking at a manga, Kaiju Number 8, Volume 2, story and art by Naoya Matsumoto. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm pretty sure I got the Matsumoto, but Naoya? Is that right? Na Naoya? <laughs> I don't know. I got Volume 2 from Kino Kuniya Bookstores. Uh, it's a Japanese bookstore. I think it's a chain, but I specifically went to the Atlanta one. I was looking for Movie Monster Series figures, admittedly, but I came back with uh, Kaiju and Ancient Hero Manga. <laughs> anyway, let me read you the back of this book from Shonen Jump and Viz Media. With the highest Kaiju emergence rates in the world, Japan is no stranger to attacks from deadly monsters. Enter the Japan Defense Force, a military organization tasked with the neutralization of Kaiju. Kafka Hibino, a Kaiju Corps cleanup man, has always dreamed of joining the force. But when he gets another shot at achieving his childhood dream, he undergoes an unexpected transformation. How can he fight Kaiju now that he's become one himself? The final test of the Defense Force has come to an end, but the examinee's challenges aren't over yet. A mysterious humanoid kaiju revives a neutralized Hanju and sicks it on Kikuro Shino Shinomiya, who is the prodigy character. Just when Kikuro seems to be at the end of her rope, Kafka rushes to her defense. But what is the humanoid kaiju's goal? All right, so last time I mentioned that the book is very shonen tropey, which we expected, you know, if you went into this expecting it to not be shown in tropey, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it is. <clears throat> Tropes work for a reason, but I think the thing that saves it from being overly tropey is the protagonist, Kafka. He is 33 and surrounded by all these younger characters who are more the age that shonen protagonist would normally be. And I think that's one of the reasons this book has had such a big appeal is because men of many ages can enjoy it. You know, uh, when like 15 year old boys that shonen manga are for can enjoy it uh, because it's clearly written for them. Uh, and I like that it's not like some sexual pervy manga like Chainsaw Man either. Chainsaw Man has a great story, but I hate all that pervy stuff in it. It's sickening. Uh, but Kaiju Number 8 doesn't have like any of that. None of it. <clears throat> we haven't even had anything romantic yet. But, uh, since he's 30, like, he has trouble keeping up with the younger characters. He uh, has trouble staying in shape. But he is also more experienced than them in some regards. Uh, and wiser and whatnot. But they also often underestimate him because of his age. And it's very relatable to older readers like myself. Uh, at the time of recording this, I'm about to turn 30. This will be out a while after I've turned 30. Uh, but I'm recording it then. I just, I have so many comic book reviews scheduled that this one has to go out past my birthday, even though I'm recording it before my birthday. So I think it's a very relatable uh, protagonist. Uh, his goals are kind of relatable for younger readers, and who he is is relatable for older readers. And I really like that. Like, it's, it's a very smart move. <laughs> and it's interesting that he's not, like, immediately good at everything. A lot of shonen protagonists are instantly very good at what they need to do. And he's not until he transforms into a kaiju. Oftentimes, when he transforms into a kaiju, he wins too quickly. Apparently, like, when they've scanned the energy coming from him... He is a record-breaking kaiju, like the strongest one that's ever existed. But his kaiju form, they'll put him down immediately upon seeing him when he takes it. So he has to stay in his human form. And I admire that he's trying to do things as a human. And I admire that this book does that. Uh, like, let's look at Chainsaw Man again. In Chainsaw Man, he only fights these devils because he has devil powers. In Kaiju number 8, he fights Kaiju because that's what he wants to do. He just happens to have also gotten Kaiju powers. So yeah, he's the weakest member on his squad, human form-wise. But he knows more about Kaiju than any of them. You know? Uh, and this, this volume really shows that off. It doesn't show it off as much in Volume 1. But in this volume, he's looking at Kaiju and he's like, Hey, look at this. This is uh, genitals for a fungus Kaiju. 
we have to destroy these or they'll still be able to reproduce even after death because of spores and blah blah blah. So we need to mutilate these genitals. <laughs> this isn't getting monetized. <laughs> and he's also like, also here are the kaiju's weak points and blah blah blah. Like he knows a lot about kaiju because of all the kaiju cleanup. Uh, and then kaiju number nine, who is a kaiju that can turn human, is undercover as a kaiju cleanup person. Very interesting. Very interesting. But at the beginning of this volume, he saves the life of the prodigy from the last one. She agrees to keep the secret that he can turn into a kaiju. Uh, and the two of them, who started off not liking each other, have kind of become a, a bit more understanding of each other. There's also a lot of friendly rival stuff going on with multiple characters in this book. And friendly rivals are a shonen trope. But I like it a lot. I like friendly rivals. A lot. Uh, yeah, rivals that butt heads can also be fun, but I like the friendlier ones more. <laughs> That's just a personal taste of mine. But yeah, they gotta fight a giant fungus kaiju, and they do, and they defeat it without kaiju number eight's help. Well, the human uh, Kafka helps, but not his kaiju form. But then they discover kaiju number nine roaming around. They try to take him out. And he does have to bring out his kaiju form to fight that being, who I also hope we get a movie monster series figure of, because I don't want to buy the figure art. The figure art will be smaller than my movie monster series, kaiju number eight. So, I'm sure we'll get it. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot of good stuff that shows how the characters grow on the battlefield in this. But kaiju number eight takes out kaiju number nine pretty quick, completely decapitates him. But also, that doesn't slow him down. And this book ends on a cliffhanger with Kaiju number nine's head regrowing and getting ready to really face Kaiju number eight. So it looks like we're finally going to get a battle in volume three where uh, Kaiju number eight doesn't have it so easy. Which will be good to see because, yeah, he's struggling to keep up when he's in his human form, but as Kaiju number eight, he's won every fight he's been in pretty much instantly. Which is boring. It's cool to see the first time to establish power, you know. But now that we're on the third fight, it is time to have him struggle to win. <laughs> and that'll be in Volume 3. I have not read Volume 3. I do not have Volume 3. I need to buy it. Uh, at the time of recording this, I think there's at least 10 volumes. I know I'm behind. It's okay. But I might switch to... Uh, Junji Ito stuff. I was lent a Junji Ito book that I need to read. Uh, also, I have Go Go Loser Ranger, Kamen Rider Kuga, and Dinosaur Sanctuary. Dinosaur Sanctuary I'm only one volume behind on, but I have that volume. Uh, at the time of recording this, we're only up to volume four, and I've reviewed the first three. So i got to get to that one. But that is it for Kaiju number eight, volume two. It's a really good book with really good art. I love Kaiju number eight's design. He's really more of a Kaijin. Uh... But I like that humanoid form. I like the colors. Yes, the book is in black and white, but each volume starts off with a couple color pages, and the cover of volume one has him in color, and he looks really fucking cool. Really cool. I, I love it. And a lot of the designs of the human JDF look like they're inspired by definitely the Ultraman manga and possibly even Pacific Rim. Uh, I haven't read any behind-the-scenes stuff for Kaiju Number 8. I haven't watched the anime, but I will probably get to the anime at some point and review it on the second channel. But I want to... Uh, I want to do the manga first, to be completely honest with you. I haven't been watching much anime at all in the past several years. Uh, and I'm not one of those, oh, the manga's always better kind of guys. But uh, I think it's just because I work with screaming kids all day. I work with a lot of museums in an educational capacity, and a lot of museums focus on educating children. So I'm, I just have a very loud workplace, and when I get home, I often don't have the TV on. I just prefer to read in silence, because I've had a loud day. Which is why there haven't been as many movie and TV show reviews on the second channel recently. That's why that is, because I just... Uh, I just like to sit in the quiet, because I'm an old man, like Kafka. <laughs> 
But that is it. Thank you all very much for your support. Just remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. as an uh. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.